Hi guys, Andy here. Now, as you probably guessed, every now and then uh, a company, they just they send me products, they want me to review it. I'm more than happy to give things a try. Um, but I was contacted recently about a plant sensor, a Wi-Fi plant sensor. Um, amongst other things, I picked out other things to review. And then they contacted me again saying, are you sure you don't want to look at this plant sensor? I said, I'm not really into plants, if I'm honest. It's not my thing. Um, and the response was, well, you're the ideal person then. You know, uh, in theory, you whack this sensor into your plant and it tells you what to do. Even a monkey could use it. I thought, as a challenge that I can't refuse. So, uh, so I've been sent this Kabachi Wi-Fi plant sensor. Indoor plant sensor. Because all the plants I've got outdoors are in like a communal area and someone's going to nick anything valuable. Um, now, this did mean... I had to go out and buy a plant, which I've done. I've called him Leonard. Um, and the plant sensor itself has just arrived. So um, we're going to have a bit of a look at it, basically. Is that taped in? No, it's not. Oh, there we go. So the idea being, as I think I mentioned, you stick the plant sensor into the plant, and there, there is the actual plant sensor. A little lock and unlock. I presume that's where you can put batteries in. I need a coin to do that. Um, you stick it in the plant. You install the app on your phone. And in theory it tells us what to do. So, just double check. We've got a manual in the in the box. I'll have a... Well, maybe... Yeah, I'll have a little read. I suppose I should do, really. Um, so we've got batteries in the box. And normally with an unboxing you get proper tight in view, but I'm, I'm not supposing there's too much exciting to look at inside this box. I think that's it. So yeah, the device and the batteries. So I'm going to plug them in and I'm going to see how it works, basically. It feels like a reasonably well made device. Uh, to get into the battery compartment underneath we need a one penny coin. 2p didn't fit, but 1p did the job. Uh, put the batteries in. Be careful, the batteries actually had to go point in the same direction. I had to double check myself here because um, normally, obviously, one lays one way and one lays the other, but they go th both go in the same direction. But in it goes, and we secure the back, and we're pretty much good to go as far as the device is concerned. Now, here's my uh, lovely assistant. A couple of dead leaves in there at this point, but hopefully, I'll be able to nurse it back to health with my new device. I found the pairing of the device actually quite frustrating. The documentation on their website says just install the app on your phone and off you go. It tells you what to do, but it doesn't tell you what to do. Um, you look through all the settings, you can't find anything. It was only after about an hour, hour and a quarter, and I've been searching the internet, I've been checking their website and could not see how you do it. You have to add the plant first. So here we are, I've searched out my plant. They've got quite a big database of plants. Um, so hopefully whatever you have it should fit. There's actually a lot of information just on this plant and where it's from and well, how it should be looked after um, and even when you add it to your your own sort of garden so to speak you get to choose what type of pot is it and what colour the pot is so you also you try and match it. They didn't really have one that matched the cream colour that I had unfortunately but that'll do for now. And my plant shall be called Leonard. I don't know why but why not. Um, you tell it obviously it's an indoor plant and you get to say the location. So in this case, it's in the living room. And there we go. We click done and it adds that to my uh, my mat of plants. We can move them around a little bit if we want into any one of the uh, different positions. Let's have a look at the information. In fact, so this is where we configure the plant sensor. So this is what I've been looking for. Now, why this wasn't in the settings, I don't quite know. Or why this just pop up a message saying, add a plant, then you can configure your sensor. Anyway, you add a plant, and then it lets you configure a sensor. Effective, what you have to do, uh, you put it into configuration mode on the sensor itself, which is holding the button down for about three seconds, it flashes. You then connect to it. You then tell it what your home network is, give it its password. And it passes that information into the sensor. You then connect back to your own home Wi-Fi and go back into the app and it tells you the device is all configured and ready to go. 
Straight away you get some information like how much water or moisture is in the soil, how much light is hitting the sensor, um, and the temperature, sorry, uh, above the soil and below the soil. So mine was saying zero, so I thought, okay, well, let's crank a bit of water in there. Maybe Len's thirsty. So I put just a little dash of water. It sort of says the indoor ones aren't particularly waterproof. Um, I couldn't entirely understand if I was supposed to remove it or not when I watered it, but it seemed to cope fine. Now, the reason I had to use my iPad, I didn't explain. The Android doesn't let you configure the sensor. If you have a uh, Wi-Fi laptop, you can do it using that instead. But otherwise, you're out of luck, to be honest, which is a bit of a uh, bit of an issue. When we go into the app now on my phone, it tells me, does Leonard need watering? Does he need misting? Uh, it, obviously, it's still analyzing some of the information. It takes a few days. Like, it took a day to decide about the water. It takes... Or I forget, four or five days to decide about the light or the temperature. And then it will give me all the information. Now, even if you weren't using the sensor, there is a lot of information about this plant. What what colours it goes, how, how often you mist it, how often you water it, what sort of temperatures it is, what part of the country it's uh, country, what kind of the world, part of the world it's from, sorry. So there, even if you don't use the sensor, there's actually a lot of information. Now, I decided, this was a few days later, but I thought, you know, I'm going to give them a misting. I've been down to B&Q, because as you'll see in a moment, I actually bought another couple of plants. Uh, and I thought, let's give Leonard a misting. It says he doesn't need it for another day, but then it doesn't actually know. The app doesn't know when he'd last got misted, which could have been never. So I misted him, and now I'm going to record in the app that I've misted him. Under my thumb there is the uh, misted. So now it changes to mist Leonard in four days. I would hope... And it should, you see above there, it says it doesn't need watering. Fertilize Leonard in five months. Fine. So it was going so well, I thought, well, let's add another plant. Because in theory, you don't need more than one device. The Wi-Fi sensor can be moved between different plants. So here's my, uh, my new plant. I'm just going to tap into a spare space. And I'm going to search out this new one. And there it is, look. So we're going to go straight in. Once again, I get lots of information about this plant, which I don't know if you're really into your plants, might be quite interesting to you. I'm not particularly into them. I just like to have them dotted about the flat, make the place look a bit more uh, civilized. So, yeah, loads of information. Yeah, go ahead. Let's add this plant, please. Again, I'm going to choose a color of pot and a, and a style of pot. And then we need to... Uh, Fill out the other information. So this one I shall call Alan. So there he is, there's Alan. I'm just going to move him a little bit away from the other one. So now I need to uh, tell it the sensor is in here. So I'm going to tap, this, well I'm going to put the sensor in first, sorry. Made quite a mess taking it out of the other plant. All the soil seemed to have stuck to the to the shaft. Then I'm going to tap Associate. You do need to make sure you just press the button. Well, actually, it tells you now press the button on the sensor, and then it basically goes, okay, okay, I've moved the sensor to the other plant. Now, I'm sure I read somewhere that it actually would detect when you when it's been moved, but uh, you may have to go in each time. I've not fully tried this because it takes, in theory, you've got to give it sort of at least five or six days when you move the sensor for it to gather all the information. Now, this particular plant was, uh, was on offer. It was like three pounds, reduced from 10, because... Is in a bit of a bad way, so I thought, well, let's get some some baby bio and let's get some water in there and uh, see if we can bring it back to life. I'm hopefully doing some good to my carpet as well, as I seem to get just as much water on the carpet as in the plant. But uh, there's Alan; he's all watered. I, even, I give him a quick misting as well, so I record that. If I go back to Leonard, it basically says, "Oh, the sensor's not there. I can't tell you some of this information." It'll still remind me to fertilize him and to mist him, but it won't know if he's got enough water. I was on such a roll, I got myself another plant to go in my bedroom. Now, this one, I was going to leave the sensor in the uh, in the dying plant, so this one, I was literally just going to add into the application, get it in there, have it tracking the sort of misting and watering and, and stuff for me at this point. Well, misting, really, I suppose. And once again... Lots of useful information, where this plant's from, and how much it takes, and, and all that sort of thing. So, there we go. I've now got three plants on the go with one sensor. So all in all, I'm quite enjoying the natty little device. 
Um, eighty pounds for the indoor one at the moment. Um, I think it's a hundred and a bit for the outdoor one. Uh, but that, as you see, that can be moved around different plants. I find it was very frustrating trying to set it up. The documentation is very poor on the website. It doesn't tell you in the app that you need to add the plant to then configure the sensor. I contacted them on Twitter. They seem quite dismissive. Oh, next year's app will put better instructions in. Just put them on the website. It's such a simple thing to do. I find it quite confusing, the company's dismissal of current customers and anyone that buys them this year. Um, so I'll leave that up to you. There might be other variants of this device out there that you might prefer to go with that might be better supported. That's your choice. It is a good device though, and I'm uh, quite enjoying myself with my new plant friends. My name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.